Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS range gear guide. When deciding what gear to wear, there's a lot of different items out there, and especially if you're a newer player to the game, it can be a bit confusing on what to choose. My goal in this guide is to give you some information about different ranged weapons and armor that you can use, and which gear you should be using depending on your levels and what you're fighting. This is going to be a fairly lengthy guide since there's a lot of range gear out there. I'm going to be starting by discussing just how range works, which includes range accuracy, strength bonuses, and safe spots. Afterwards, we'll talk about Ava's devices. Those could be in the armor section of the guide, but they are important enough that they should be early in the video. Then I will discuss ranged weapons and ammo, followed by some ranged armor that you can fill in with those weapons. If at any point after watching a section you still have some questions, let me know in the comments section below. Range is generally the most used combat style for a couple of reasons. A lot of it has to do with the powerful weapons that range has, but also being able to attack from afar gives the opportunity for safe spotting monsters without being nearly as expensive as magic. When you put on ranged armor and weapons, you're going to notice a boost in your range offense. This boost shows your ranged accuracy, so the higher level that this is and the lower your opponent's ranged defense is, the better chance you have to do some damage. Your range level is also going to help with your ranged accuracy, of course. When you attack an opponent with range, the game's going to first decide if you did some damage using a random number generator, or in other words, RNG. Obviously with higher accuracy, you're more likely to roll a hit, but there's still some RNG involved. So if you have extremely high range accuracy, you could still see a couple of zeros in a row. Sometimes you just get unlucky. Once the game decides that you did hit the monster, it then rolls from the number zero to your max hit and it does that much damage. So you still could hit the monster and then not hit the monster by hitting a zero. It's kind of weird. Your max hit is determined by your range strength bonus and your range level. With higher range strength, you can hit much harder, but your range strength is mostly determined by your ammo. There's a few weapons and gear pieces that give a little bit of range strength bonus, but higher tier ammo is going to provide higher hits. Safe spots are a simple concept and overall provide a huge advantage in PVM combat. The idea of a safe spot is that you can range a monster while they're stuck too far away to attack you. This is most commonly used against melee monsters since they need to be right next to you to attack you. Some safe spots are really easy to see, like standing behind a rock or a ladder, but as you mess around with how NPCs walk around and target players, you're going to find that there's a lot of corners you can get monsters stuck in. There's even cases where a monster is just too big to fit in the area that you're standing, so they'll just stand there and stare at you while you attack them. Some monsters that use range or magic attacks do have a short range and you can get them stuck and then stand further back to be able to safe spot them. There's also monsters that hit with multiple attack styles so you could safe spot them to stop them from using a melee attack and then you could protect from range or at least be wearing armor that has really good range defense and save some hits that way. Overall safe spots can be very important for combat training and even some higher level bossing stuff. I'm not going to try to go over every possible safe spot in this video because that alone could be a very, very long video. So if you're fighting something, either mess around with some safe spots or just look up if there is a safe spot for that monster. Now let's go ahead and jump into Ava's devices. Normally when you fight an arrow or a bolt, even if you throw some knives, the ammo either breaks or it shows up on the ground under whatever you shot it at. You can pick up the ammo that you fired and use it again, other than the 20% of it that breaks, but it does become pretty annoying. Ava's devices have a chance of automatically picking up that ammo and re-equipping it for you. To unlock these backpacks, you need to do animal magnetism, which does require 30 range, so you're not gonna get a backpack right out of the gate. If you're under 50 range, you can get the Ava's attractor from Ava for only 990 99 coins, but that's only if you lose the first one that she's going to give you when you complete the quest. If you're 50 plus range, she's instead going to give you an accumulator, but if you need to upgrade your backpack to the accumulator, it only requires 75 steel arrows, unless you don't have a backpack in the first place, then you still need the 999 coins for the attractor and 75 steel arrows to make it an accumulator. Accumulator not only has a higher range bonus, but it does give a better chance to pick up ammo for you, leaving less of it on the ground. If you complete Dragon Slayer 2 and you fight Vorkath enough to get the Vorkath's head, you can take your Accumulator, 75 Mithril Arrows, and that head to Ava to get an Assembler. The Ava Assembler has an even higher range bonus and a small range strength bonus. Also, this backpack will pick up all of the ammo from the ground, so you're not going to see any more ammo land on the ground to pick up, though you're still going to break 20% of the ammo that you use. That's just a natural mechanic that you can't get past. Otherwise, you'd only have to buy one bolt or one arrow and that would be a little overpowered. It is extremely important to get an Ava's device as soon as you can if you plan on using range. You can just pick up all of your ammo pretty consistently, as annoying as it is. There are some monsters that you fight that you aren't able to pick up their ammo. The easiest example is Olm's head. When you shoot an arrow at Olm's head, it doesn't appear under him, it, it just disappears. Even if they didn't have the effect where they were picking up arrows though, just having a higher range accuracy and even that range strength bonus from the assembler is a big deal. 
Let's start discussing some ranged weapons. First of all, I should note that there are very few times where you shouldn't be using rapid on a ranged weapon. Using rapid instead of accurate is going to speed up your attack by one game tick, and that maxes out your damage per second. When you're on accurate, you do more damage and you're more accurate per hit, but going slower, it ends up just being slower overall. There are a variety of ranged weapons out there, including thrown weapons like darts and knives. There are bows, which are generally two-handed weapons that shoot arrows, and crossbows, which are generally one-handed weapons that shoot bolts. We're going to begin with the thrown weapons. Darts and knives are very similar weapons. They each fire very fast, which makes them really good for range training, especially at lower levels. Knives are a lot stronger than darts though, so a steel knife is basically the same weapon as a mithril dart, but obviously mithril darts are a little bit cheaper than steel knives. So once you unlock the next tier of weapon, it makes sense to at least get the new darts for a cheaper alternative, but also if you get to the next tier of knife, you do more damage with that as long as you can afford them. So buying mithril knives would be better than mithril darts, but eventually you get to addy and rune knives and even dragon knives. Those are far too expensive to want to buy, so the darts aren't a bad option either, especially for those who are working on a budget. Other than lower level training, these aren't used that often. Sometimes they're used for tagging monsters before using ancient spells or chinchampas to kill a bunch at a time. And also the blowpipe uses a ton of darts, but we're going to talk about that more in a bit. There are also thrown axes for thrown range weapons. These are far stronger than knives, but they are also a lot slower, so they're not used very often. The rune thrown axe is an interesting special attack, which can hit multiple targets. It's mainly just used to get into the DK's layer by yourself, though. Dragon thrown axe is also a special attack. This one increases accuracy, and it can be used in quick succession with another weapon, making it very powerful for PvP, but not very commonly used for PvM. The Toxzil Ol, thankfully I don't have to say that name again, this is an obsidian ring that you obtain from the Tsar people under the Karamja Volcano. It is a really powerful thrown weapon with speeds in between knives and thrown axes. You do need 60 range to be able to wear them though, and by then you generally have other good options for range, so these are also really only used in PvP if anything. Chinchampas are a unique thrown weapon since they can hit many targets at once. When you throw a chinchampa at a monster, it's going to explode, doing an area of effect damage to a 3x3 three three area. There's three tiers of chinchampas you can use. You have gray chinchampas being the weakest and most uncommon. Red chinchampas are in the middle and they're used for a lot of range training. And black chinchampas are the strongest, most often used to kill Kriera, the armadillo boss in God of War's dungeon, but they can also be used for very fast range training. Chinchapas are very expensive to use because you do not get them back when you throw them, even if you're wearing an Ava's device. They just explode. It's a 100% chance that you lose the ammo when you use it. I do suggest wearing your backpack still, though, since they have that good range bonus. That's all of the thrown weapons that I plan on talking about. If you didn't notice, the main correlation with all those weapons is all of the ammo just goes directly in your weapon slot instead of the ammo slot. So you hold a thousand knives or a thousand darts or however many chinchampas rather than all these other weapons we're going to talk about where you have to put on ammo as well. Next, we're going to talk about bows. Bows are two-handed weapons that shoot arrows, believe it or not. Most bows have a short bow and a long bow version of it. The short bow is a faster weapon and is used more often for training. The long bow is better range, though, and it's often used for things like luring monsters. The main bows are fletched from logs all the way from normal logs to magic logs. The magic short bow is a popular weapon since it's a low requirement overall and it has a really good special attack which hits two times. Also the short bow can be imbued by using a magic short bow scroll on it. The imbued bow is more accurate and the special attack only requires 50% of the spec bar instead of 55%. Higher tier bows are not only more accurate but they can also use higher tier arrows as ammo which increases the max hit potential. When choosing which ammo to use obviously you need to take into account how how much money you have, but remember when you're fighting a monster that can make you a lot of money, using better arrows is going to kill it faster, making up for the extra money spent on arrows, especially with a higher tier Ava's device, unless you're still picking up your arrows on the ground, then I guess that doesn't matter either. In general, arrows aren't very expensive, so it's suggested to lean towards a higher tier arrow, maybe other than dragon, unless you're doing high level bossing, since amethyst arrows are a thing. Amethyst arrows are almost as strong as dragon and much cheaper. That is probably the most commonly used arrow once you're high level. But again, if you're doing higher level bossing, like the Hydra boss maybe, you probably want to use dragon arrows. There are a few special bows that are more powerful than the magic short bow and long bow, or at least they have different mechanics and they cannot be fletched just from regular logs. I'm going to start with the dark bow, which requires 60 range to use. The dark bow is a very slow bow, but it also has a unique effect where it shoots two arrows at once on every shot. So it's like using that magic short bow spec every single time. But even while you're doing two arrows at once, it's so much slower than the magic short bow that the magic short bow ends up being better. The dark bow is used in some niche situations like PvP, but it can also hit very hard with its special attack, making it an interesting weapon for getting a couple of extra hits on like a Zora fight or something. But often, the dark bow isn't used. 
Next we have the crossbow, not to be confused with a crossbow. This one also requires 60 range. On its own, it's about as strong as a magic shortbow, but it has some unique benefits. You can charge the bow with ether, which requires 1000 ether just to sort of activate it. Then you can actually fill it up with ether while it's activated, and it's going to use one ether per attack. So you need 1000 ether just to start it up, and then every ether after that, it uses one per attack. As long as the bow is charged and you're fighting an NPC in the wilderness, it has a 50% boost to both accuracy and range strength, making it extremely powerful against some willy bosses like Venonatus, for instance. Also, it doesn't require any ammo, so you don't have to bring any arrows. Even if you do bring arrows, it's just going to make its own ammo, so no arrows are needed. Speaking of weapons that don't require ammo, our next bow is the Crystal Bow. This is a reward that you can choose from completing the Roving Elves quest. Not only does it require 70 range to use, but you also need 50 agility to wield it. The crystal bow can be charged from Ilfine, who is an elf located in the elven forest. Her location changes fairly often, but there's only a few spots that she can be hanging out. The bow gets weaker as you use it unless you imbue it at the nightmare zone. This isn't used too often, but it has very long range, making it helpful against some bosses like Jad. If you use your crystal bow often and you recharge it many times, each time that you recharge it at the elf lady, she is going to charge you less money to recharge it, which is kind of nice. The final bow that we're going to be talking about is the most powerful weapon in the game in most situations, that is the Twisted Bow. This bow isn't necessarily best in slot for every combat situation out there, but it is insanely good. It requires 75 range to use and can use any kind of arrow. Often amethyst or dragon arrows are chosen at this point. The T-Bow has an effect where it is much stronger based off the opponent's magic level. A lot of bosses have a high magic level, giving the bow a very high max hit, 80 plus damage in some situations. It's not insanely accurate, so it can noodle sometimes, but it quickly makes up for any streak of zeros by popping 80s and 70s. The bow also has a range of the Crystal Bow, which is a very underrated perk. You can stand extremely far away from a monster and still do a lot of damage. The T-Bow is very expensive, but it's also used in many high-level PVM situations, especially raids, so it tends to make a lot of money for you. Those who get a T-Bow and have never used it before, it really is only meant for high-level monsters with high magic. So if you're just doing regular Slayer, the T-Bow isn't always going to be your best option. Something like a, a weak little Bloodveld, the T-Bow doesn't do that well against. Compared to Commander Zilliana, the Saradoman God Wars dungeon boss, where the T-Bow cranks. Let's go ahead and move on to crossbows. Crossbows are generally one-handed weapons that are often more powerful than bows, partially because you can wear a shield with them, and that shield can give you an accuracy and a defense bonus. There are normal tiered crossbows that can be fletched similar to bows. They go from bronze to dragon crossbows. Each tier gives higher accuracy, and same with bows, each higher tier can fire better ammo. Crossbows fire bolts, which also range from bronze to dragon. Similar to arrows, the higher tiers are going to give you higher strength bonuses. Bolts can be very expensive for normal training, so many folks try to unlock broad bolts, which require 55 slayer and at least a rune crossbow to use. Broad bolts are very cheap and they're as strong as adamant bolts, otherwise I wouldn't go any higher than mithril bolts for normal training because again they can get very expensive. The dragon crossbow can use dragon bolts, but dragon bolts are pretty pricey so they're only used in higher level PVM situations like raids. Bolts can also be enchanted to have some special effects. The most commonly enchanted bolts would be diamond bolts and ruby bolts. Ruby bolts have a special effect where it hits a percentage of your opponent's health remaining, which can hit up to 100. And enchanted diamond bolts have a special effect where sometimes they'll do some extra damage and they can hit through defense. The Dorgashun crossbow is a special crossbow that only requires 28 range. This crossbow is tradable, but for an Iron Man, you gotta complete the Lost Tribe quest to be able to buy one. This crossbow is a little bit faster than most crossbows, and it's the only one that can use bone bolts, which are insanely cheap. So it's a really good weapon for lower to mid-level range training if you don't know what to use. But once you're able to use like a magic shortbow or even a rune crossbow, you don't want to be using the Dorgashun crossbow anymore. The Dragon Hunter crossbow is one of the most powerful weapons in the game, as long as you're fighting dragons, though. You need 65 range to equip this crossbow, and if you're fighting a dragon, it receives a 30% bonus in accuracy and strength. This can use up to dragon bolts. The DHCB crushes against bosses like Vorkath and Ulm, though it's very expensive at the moment. It will make up for the money if you actually use this thing, especially on Vorkath. The Carol's Crossbow is a tier 70 two-handed crossbow. The only bolts that it can use are bolt racks. It's faster than a normal crossbow, but it's not quite as powerful. It is a mid-tier crossbow that doesn't cost too much. It is often used by Iron Man looking for a fire cape, but in general, the Carol's Crossbow doesn't see a lot of action. Next, we have the Toxic Blowpipe, likely the most commonly used range weapon. This weapon requires 75 range to use. The Blowpipe has to be charged with Zulra scales and is going to use two scales every three attacks. The Blowpipe fires darts, like I mentioned earlier in the guide, so it also needs to be filled with darts before you use it. 
The mechanics for shooting your darts will work the same way as just throwing the darts. Your backpack will pick up a certain amount of them and the backpack should automatically put them back in your blowpipe. Since you do need to load the pipe with scales and darts, it can be pretty expensive to recharge and use over a long period of time, but it's such a fast weapon that it makes up for the cost very quickly. The BP also has a 25% chance to inflict venom when attacking, unless you're wearing a serpentine helm, in which case it has a 100% chance of inflicting venom on your opponent. Though keep in mind, many bosses are immune to venom, so there's a lot of monsters that this doesn't really make a difference, but for regular Slayer, especially in a multi-combat area, you can make sure to tag a bunch of monsters at once, and then while you're killing one of the monsters, all all the other ones that you did damage to could potentially take venom damage. It also has a special attack that heals 50% of the damage it does. This special attack gets a bonus in range strength so it can hit even higher, but uh, many people believe that it somehow gets a, a decrease in range accuracy because you will hit an insane amount of zeros with the blowpipe spec, but it can be helpful to heal up a little bit. The blowpipe's an extremely powerful range weapon and highly suggested for things like Slayer, regular range training, and even some bosses like Raids. There's a lot of bosses where the Tebow is a stronger weapon, but it's still beneficial to even bring the blowpipe with you for maybe that spec, the venom damage, or even when a monster gets to low health. Some of the benefits of the Tebow is how high it hits, so when you're fighting a monster that only has like 10 health remaining, the blowpipe will get you through that a lot faster. It's very cheap to start using a blowpipe, it only gets expensive as you use it a lot, so I suggest using it as soon as you can, since it'll make up for the money quickly. Yes, it costs money to use it, but if you're using it to train your slayer or do some bossing, you'll actually make that money back, and because you're killing things faster, you'll make that money back faster. Quickly now we'll talk about ballistas. There's only two ballistas in the game, the light ballista and the heavy ballista. These fire javelins as ammo, but they really aren't used that often. The heavy ballista can hit very hard though, and it's seen a little bit more in PvP to try to get that knockout more than it is in PvM. They're just a little bit too slow to be that useful in most PvM situations. The last weapon I'll discuss here is a little bit of a weird one. The Dwarf Multi-Cannon is not a weapon that you wield. You place the cannon on the ground, and you fill it up with cannonballs 30 at a time, and it spins around firing those cannonballs at any PCs that it can hit. Each cannonball can hit up to a 30 unless you're using granite cannonballs, which have a max hit of 35. This max hit is not affected by your range strength, and if you want to get granite cannonballs, you have to use granite dust on a cannonball, and you get granite dust from killing the gargoyle boss. The cannon can be very expensive to use in the long run, but it is very effective for range training since it hits a lot of monsters, and you can still attack monsters on your own. Plus, it's very helpful for speeding through some of your slayer tasks, not only for fast slayer XP, but to grab up slayer points quicker and hopefully get yourself to a better monster money-making task to make up for that money. If you have any more questions about any ranged weapons, let me know in the comments section below, but for now we're going to be moving on to the armor section. At level 1, there's not a whole lot of armor that you can wear, though there is some special range gear with no range requirements that I'll talk about later in this section since they're not really beginner's ranged items. The only armor that you really have at the moment is leather armor. There's a leather cowl, body, legs, van braces, and boots. Though the boots don't really give any range bonus, they're just there for slight defense bonus. You can also upgrade your leather body to a hard leather body as long as you have at least 10 defense. At level 20 range, you can upgrade some of your leather gear to studded leather, that's only the chaps and the top that are in the game, but you can also upgrade to a coif instead of a cowl in your head slot. The hard leather body is the same range boost as a studded leather body, but the studded body does have better defense. The studded leather body requires 20 defense, but the chaps and the coif don't require a defense level apparently. You can also upgrade your shield slot at level 20 to a hard leather shield. This is obviously only helpful when you're using a one-handed weapon, so if you're using a bow this doesn't really matter, but the shield does have some defense bonuses and a bit of a range boost. At level 25 range and defense, you can wear frog armor, which is probably the least used armor in the game. There's only a chest, legs, and boots in the frog leather armor. Strangely, the chest is better than your studded chest, but the legs are not better than your studded chaps. The boots, however, are the first boots options that you have for a range bonus. A lot of players just skip this level 25 tier and wait until 30 range, though, because you're almost there. At 30 range and defense, you can wear snakeskin armor. This consists of a helm, chest, legs, gloves, and boots. All of these pieces are your new best in slot range gear, other than the snakeskin chaps, which are still the same range bonus as your studded chaps, but it's worse defense on the snakeskin, so this is the proof that we needed that studded chaps are, in fact, OP. Snakeskin is extremely cheap, and you might find that snakeskin boots are going to be your best in slot boots for a while if you're broke. There's also a snakeskin shield, which you can get if you're using a one-handed weapon. At 40 range and defense, you're going to start unlocking some Dragonhide gear. In this case, you can now use green Dragonhide. When buying a green Dragonhide set from the Grand Exchange, you're going to get a body, legs, and van braces, which go in the glove slot, but there's also a green Dragonhide shield for those with the open shield slot. 
Green Dragon Hide is pretty legit gear for having low requirements and being very cheap, but keep in mind to wear the Green Dragon Hide body, you're going to need to complete the Dragon Slayer quest. Also, once you hit 40 range and defense, you can wear Spine Gear, which has similar stats to Green Dehide. There's a helm, chest, legs, gloves, and boots for Spine Gear. The helm's your new best and sloption in the current tier, though we'll be talking about a different helm later that you may end up using instead. The boots are basically useless, and the rest of the gear is basically Green Dehide stuff, but more expensive, so not a lot of people wear Spine Gear. You've also unlocked the Ranger's outfit at tier 40, which includes a Robin Hood hat, Ranger's tunic, Ranger's tights, Ranger boots, and Ranger gloves. These items are all rewards from clue scrolls, which make them very expensive for just a little bit of a boost. The Ranger boots are the second best in slot boots in the game, and the Robin Hood hat has a very good range bonus for only a level 40 requirement. Most players can't afford any of the Ranger's outfit right at 40 range, but if you did have the money for a piece, they're pretty solid for a low requirement. The level 42 range and defense, you can now wear void range gear, which is a reward from pest control. You do need to wear all four pieces of void to get the bonus, but if you have the gloves, the top, the bottom, and the void ranger helm on, you get a 10% boost to accuracy and damage for range. If you upgrade it to elite void, it's a 12.5% boost. Void's not very helpful at lower levels, but in the 90s, it's some of the best in slot gear, depending on what you're doing. Void has very low defense, so it's not great for a lot of bosses that hit very hard, or maybe when you're just learning a boss, especially for raids. If you're taking too many hits that could have been dodged, it's better to wear armor with better defense until you get good at it and you can dodge all the damage and your defense boost doesn't matter. A level 50 range, you can now wear blue dragon hide armor. This armor is just an upgrade from green dragon hide, everything including the shield, though you don't need to do dragon slayer to wear the blue dehide body. You do need 50 defense to wear any of it though, if you haven't noticed yet, more often than not you're going to need a defense level along with a range level to wear stuff. At 60 range and defense, you now unlock red dehide armor. Very simply, this is just an upgrade to your blue dehide armor, shield included. At 65 range, you unlock 3rd Age armor. 3rd Age is just as good as a lot of tier 70 gear, but it's also extremely rare to get from high level clues, so it's very expensive and really not practical to use. You're only 5 levels from much cheaper gear at this point. At 70 range in defense, you unlock a lot of armor. First of all, you can wear Black Dehide, which is very commonly used since it's very cheap and it has solid bonuses. There's been some talk lately about nerfing Black Dehide's magic defense, but it's mostly an issue for PvP, and at the moment, there's no guarantee of the nerf, they're just talking about it. Also at tier 70, you have Carol's gear. I mentioned the crossbow earlier, but there's also a coif, leather top, and a skirt that you can wear. Carol's gear is slightly lower range boost than Black Dehide armor and lower melee defense, but it has higher range in mage defense. So in general, this means you should just use Black Dragon Hide for the most part, but the Dragon Hide set doesn't have a coif, and the Carol set doesn't have gloves, so you can mix and match a few pieces. Carol's is also more expensive and it's degradable. When you're wearing a full Carol's set and using the Carol's crossbow, each successful hit has a chance to lower your opponent's agility, which is not extremely useful, but if you also are wearing an Amulet of the Damned, you have a 25% chance to hit a second hit splat that does half the damage of your first one. Or in other words, wearing the Amulet of the Damned with full Carols will boost your damage by 12.5%. Another tier 70 armor set is the Blessed Dragonhide gear, which is the final tier of Dragonhide armor, still including a shield. Blessed Dehide is a little pricey compared to Black Dehide, but each piece of Blessed Dehide gives a plus one prayer bonus, which slows down your prayer drain. The shield, chest, legs, and van braces all have the same stats as the Black Dragonhide counterparts, other than the prayer bonus, but there is a helm and boots unlike Black Dehide. Blessed Dehide boots are commonly used when players can't afford Ranger boots. There's a Blessed Dehide set for each god, Zami, Arma, Ceradomen, Bandos, also a Guthic set and an Ancient set do exist. When making this video, the Bandos set was the cheapest, but they are all similar price and they all have the same exact stats. The only reason that you need a specific piece would be for the God of Wars dungeon or some clues require certain pieces of gear. Currently the strongest range armor in the game is Armadil gear. There is a chest plate, a chain skirt, and a helmet which all require 70 defense and range. The armor top and bottom are very expensive, and once you're mid to high 90s in your range level, Void becomes more damage per second, but Arma also has much higher defense, which is very beneficial especially for bosses like the God of Wars dungeon, when there's a lot of unavoidable damage going on. The helm is much cheaper than the top and the bottom, and is not used as often due to things like the Slayer helm on task, you've got the Serpentine helm, not to mention tank helms like Varix and the just this your face guard. It still has the highest range boost of any helm in the game though. At 70 range and 75 defense you can wield the Dragonfire Ward. This is basically a Dragonfire shield with a range bonus. So it's the only shield that can protect you from Dragonfire and gives you a boost to your range accuracy which is pretty nice and it's a pretty cool shield but it's only very useful at Vorkath for the most part. 
At 75 range and 75 defense, you can wear Pegasian boots, which are the best boots in the game for ranging. These are an upgrade from Ranger boots, and the upgrade is actually very cheap. They, you only need to add a Pegasian crystal to the boots, and the, the crystal's like 150k. So, for the most part, if you can afford Ranger boots, you likely can afford Pegasian boots. Also at 75 defense and 75 range, we have the Twisted Buckler. This is the best range shield in the game and honestly just looks adorable. There's not a lot of situations where you use the Buckler since it's a high level shield and most high level range is done with two handed weapons like the T-Bow and the Blowpipe. Plus when you're using a Dragon Hunter Crossbow, you're likely fighting a Dragon. So you need a different shield in most situations than the Twisted Buckler. It does have a very good range bonus for any time that you can squeeze it in though. Now let's get back to some of that gear that only requires one range. I didn't want to put these in the tier 1 section right away because most players with only one range don't manage to buy these items. Or maybe you're an Iron Man and you can't go get them yet. First of all, we'll talk about the Archer's Ring, which has no stat requirements. It's a pretty expensive ring, but it does give a plus 4 range accuracy and defense bonus. The only other ring that gives range bonus is a Brimstone Ring, which also gives you boosts from other rings, but it can't be imbued. The Archer's Ring can be imbued, which doubles the stats, making it the best ring in the game for ranging. Next we have the God Books, which are a reward from completing Horror from the Deep and have no specific level requirements other than the levels that you need to do the quest. You can get an empty book from Jossic and then you have to fill it up with their four corresponding pages, which are tradable. The books that can be helpful for range include the Book of Law, which takes Armadil pages and gives a plus 10 boost. Then you have the Unholy Book, which takes Zami pages and gives a plus 8 range bonus, but also gives you plus 8 in all other combat boosts, which is nice for bosses that require multiple attack styles. And lastly, we have the Book of Balance, which gives a plus 4 range boost and plus 4 in each of your defense stats and other offensive stats. You fill up the Book of Balance with Guthic pages. Barrow's Gloves are a reward from completing the Recipe for Disaster quest. Even though there's no level requirements to wear the gloves, Recipe for Disaster is a high requirement quest that takes a while to complete, so you're likely going to be pretty high level by the time you get Barrow's Gloves. Barrow's Gloves are the best ranging gloves in the game, and even though they're not best in slot for melee and mage, they're still extremely good for all three combat styles, making them very useful to have. There are a few necklaces that give some solid range bonuses. The Necklace of Accuracy being the weakest, followed by the Necklace of Power. Then you have the Amulet of Glory, which doesn't only give a range bonus, but also some other offensive boosts, defensive bonuses, and a prayer bonus. The Amulet of Fury is where we start to get a little bit more expensive, but it's basically an upgraded glory giving a solid plus 10 range bonus. The best necklace in the game for ranging, though, is the Necklace of Anguish, which gives plus 15 range and plus 5 range strength. None of these necklaces require a specific range level to wear, but the Necklace of Anguish does require 75 hit points to wear. The Archer's Helmet requires 45 defense, but has no range requirement. It's a solid helm giving stats similar to the Spined Helm, and requires the Fremenic Trials quest to be completed. This helm is very solid for how cheap it is, and it is your best helm until Carol's and Bless Dehyde. Lastly, we have the Odium Ward, which has no range requirement, but you do need 60 defense. The Odium Ward is the third best ranging shield in the game, only being passed by the Dragonfire Ward and the Twisted Buckler. And it is cheaper than the Buckler, so it makes for a nice alternative. I do believe that's all the information that I wanted to give about range gear, everybody. If you still have any questions about some range gear, let me know in the comments section below. Also, I don't claim to know everything about range or claim that this video has all the range information you could possibly need. So those with more tips, feel free to leave those in the comments section too for all of us. Thank you very much for watching the guide, everybody. If you got some useful information or you just enjoyed the video in general, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Speaking of more content, I also stream on Twitch and I have a Twitter and a channel Discord that you can all join. All of those links are in the description. Thanks again for watching everybody and best of luck with your grind.